Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Grinding with Borgman, episode 17. Uh, sorry about missing yesterday. Had a bunch of scheduling conflicts. I even missed my D&D group. Great sadness. Um, but, uh, uh, I, um, but, you know, hey, here we are. We're back. Uh, keeping it going. Keeping the grind moving. Um, so, uh, today I... Uh, was thinking about jumping back into um, doing those uh, gesture, the 50 gesture poses where we're going to do five a day. But today I wanted to skip that um, and just do something fun because I've been uh, catching up on my critical role lately. Um, and uh, there was just a scene that I couldn't help but find absolutely hysterical. So I just threw up a real quick sketch before, um, like, while I was listening to them, uh, because it was something that I was like, I really want to draw this, um, so, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're at a part where they're, they're racing, um, uh, skirmish crawlers through the desert, uh, and, um, chucking weapons and spells from, uh, a bunch of these creations, uh, from one to the next, and, um, uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a riot, um, you know, even if you're not into D&D, &D, it's fun, uh, so, um, the, uh, the, the premise, and, and so I just threw this quick sketch together, um, and the premise of the, uh, the, the situation is there is a, a robot, uh, and so instead of their front wheel, they replaced it with one of their robot, with one of the companions, who is a robot, uh, and he is grafted onto the front of the, uh, the construct, and then further fastened in place by uh, something known as a tangle foot bag, but, but, you know, basically a magical device designed to, um, uh, designed to, um, you know, adhere things. So, uh, he's affixed there, um, unable to move except for rotate his head a little bit and, uh, move his arms. Um, and, uh, so he's going to be between the spokes. So I just, you know, like that, that's, that's the gesture for the sketch. Um, and then, uh, as we can see, there's all kinds of craziness here. Just sharp blades, all kinds of nuts things. But this is just one iteration. So theirs is, is going to be a little bit different, but you know, uh, still lots of chaotic spikes and and whatnot um, and then uh, piloting is a very old gnomish gnomish man um, with uh, a hat this uh, individual has tried to kill Santa Claus before um, you know and and I'm not gonna there's no, there's no spoilers here because I'm catching up. This is some, some old stuff. Uh, so this is the scene we're drawing. And uh, this would be the, the pilot's seat. Boom, boom. Roll it in there like that. But yeah, I actually just turned it off to stream. <laughs> That's how, how fresh it is in my brain. And then they've got this... The, the coolest thing, man. Uh, inventions of Mad Mercers. Uh, you know, brilliant... Uh, uh, conceptualizer that he is. Um, it's, uh, 
I actually want theirs. Theirs has some extra armor plating that they paid for. So, over the power supply and I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm not sure. We're gonna skip that. That's an explicit song. Thanks, Twitch. Trying to demonetize me with your own audio platform? <laughs> I mean, not that I am monetized. But still, give me a break. Jeez. That was some sublime-esque sounds. Or Snoop Dogg. Um. So, one of the things that we can use for inspiration for this, as we kind of like develop this one, because I don't want it to be exact, um, some of that, that Final Fantasy steampunky action, you know, like tubes going into things that you wouldn't consider a power supply, stuff like that. Um, so I literally just did like the broadest sense of the sketch. Uh, and he's a tiny guy, so like, here's the seat. Actually, like, yeah, here's the top of the seat. He's having to sit on like, he's having to sit really far forward because he's a little dude. Um, probably on like a stack of phone books or something. right there piloting it what's that uh what pose is this so uh if you had gotten here early on in the chat um we're, we're not uh, i've been catching up on critical role so we're not doing uh any poses because i'm i'm kind of rolling it all into one thing because i just wanted to have a little fun today um had a very you know long day yesterday with uh lots of um unexpected uh, stuff happening. So, so we're just gonna have a have a grand old time today. Um, but yeah, and then we'll give them like one of those exhaust things. So I'm catching up on Critical Role. No fun, only pose. Yeah, sticks. You only get to draw sticks. Welcome to art. <laughs> sticks all the way down. Uh, so, one of the things that, uh, oh yeah, they're gonna have like one of those crazy cool, like, uh, which Jigger exhausts the Formula One imports. Um, but anyway, so I'm catching up on Critical Role Axo, and uh, I, there was just a scene that was just too, it, it made me laugh too hard to not want to draw it um I, I was just it was immediate like oh yeah no I gotta I gotta try and try and do that uh, so uh yeah we're uh it's a it's a racing racing scene in the in the show right now um They're racing through the desert with these these crazy walker walker motorcycles essentially where it's got uh, back legs instead of back wheels. It's basically a tricycle with legs instead of wheels at the back. Um, why the legs? No idea, but doesn't matter because it's amazing. Um, Yeah, basically, it's a it's a wheelbarrow. It's a wheelbarrow race. It's a mechanized wheelbarrow race, precisely. Um, uh, so then there's a pilot, and then uh, a figure in the back, um, and uh, and I can only think of like Magitech to a certain extent from Final Fantasy, so we're going to incorporate some of that into the design elements. Um, you know, like the, the Magitech armors, and then like a little bit of, a uh, little bit of, um, what is it? <laughs> uh, uh, like Fury Road, like, 
um, Mad Max-esque stuff, you know? So, yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, and then uh, here on the back platform uh, stands another figure. But they needed a third person, and one of the characters happens to have be a robot with a wheel, so they replaced their front wheel with their robot companion. So, um, that's, uh, what he's doing. And I think he said he had his grapple gun equipped, so he's got a grappling arm. Uh, and they painted some some red on his uh they painted some red eyebrows on him uh yes very gizmo ducky uh for sure have you seen the video of uh the guy riding the new like mechanized unicycle as gizmo duck cosplay and then he crashes <laughs> oh it's it's rough it's rough to watch um But the Gizmo Duck unicycle platform is really cool. Um, <laughs> no, but I'm going to immediate. Yeah, no, you should. You definitely should. Uh, so let's see. How are these? So these legs are kind of. So actually, we'll 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 reduce the fin situation here. Reduce this fin situation. I do like the oversized exhaust that's kind of like, apparently like this is the power supply. So, oh, they have, yeah, so they have some exhaust coming out of the front. So yeah, I want like oversized, like huge exhaust. Uh, right there. And then this is the figure on the back. And she is like an undead character. And uh, in the scene, she like used her special ability, which like unhinges her jaw and makes her into this like undead monstrosity. And uh, shadows like wail out behind her. So as you can imagine, I, it, I, just, I just got too giddy uh, at the very concept of this. <laughs> Super, super skinny, and her her day veil is how she described it. Her morning veil, uh, casting out behind her and creating this like massive shadow. Since it's their content, I want to be true to it, even. Even if you want to argue realism versus aestheticism. The argument being, it's okay for things not to have precise realism if the aesthetic would create a more visually uh, stimulating image. Um, you know. Holla, Smeth! Welcome to the stream, sir. We're skipping, uh, we're skipping doing specify, or we're skipping doing, you know, like general warm-ups for a specific piece that we're just kind of roll all our exercises up into, um, you know, starting with our, our rough, just super rough gestural sketch, uh, into more of a, a shape building sketch, which we're then going to refine further down. Ah, uh, and, um... The, uh, so her limbs have like elongated. I don't think she's gonna have like, you know. So I think like this. Yeah, there we go. 
that's how I want her pose to be. Where she's kind of like, yeah, you know, very witchy. Witchy woman. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the scene that we are, uh, the scene that we are, are rendering right now would be from, uh, I've been catching up on Critical Role episodes, and this would be a, a race in the desert between the cast and, uh, you know, force, uh, unnamed, well, for this, for the context of this, unnamed forces, but if you watch it, you know, go ahead and uh, enjoy. Enjoy the freaking most successful Twitch streamers on the planet, <laughs> I think, <laughs> who now play D&D for a living, among other things. going and she's gonna be really stretched out she's a super gaunt figure already so Things come up, you know. Of course, with my group, I'll have no idea if somebody actually killed off my character or not until next week. <laughs> but it's okay. People are expected to die in this campaign. So I'll, uh, you know, I got stuff ready just in case. Of course, I'm sad because I've, I've written pages of backstory on this character, so... <laughs> Never write pages of backstory when uh, uh, a certain mortality rate is expected um, and you are encouraged to have multiple characters ready. Uh, so, I believe she wears a skirt. Thank you. 
just wing the backstory. <laughs> just, well, what's funny is I, I made that character, this, uh, this character as a, as a joke at first because I was like, ah, I'm not sure how long, how long this campaign is going to run, but now I've grown very attached to the character. <laughs> <laughs> and I started writing a lot of backstory because it all it, it kind of actually like fleshed out as uh, um, as we played more. Uh, so it um, it's funny. Uh, and actually, it's a very it's 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 very much like a, a a kind of like approach that I've never done for a character too. So it's it's you know any RPing and stuff. Um, it's fun because it's not. Like, there are some similarities to other characters I've played before, but it's not a, uh, it's not like a, um, there's, there's some, some, some hidden depth to the character, you know, uh, in ways that I've never done before. I like to have a lot of backstory to my characters, but, um, or something like this. So. That's how that would be. There we go. So then her skirt kind of flying back. would be more yeah there we go like that just wing the backstory man and i do i do most of the time and then you get invested as you're like damn i'm actually brilliant this backstory is freaking awesome now i've got to keep rolling with it get derailed by your own genius I mean, she's still a, a woman, so, she, you know, but she's also like a, 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 a pseudo undead woman, so I feel like, you know how, like, I, I, you know, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. The the undead breasts in um, <laughs> in uh, World of Warcraft much saggier than uh, than other other races. So uh, I think I think there's going to be a certain amount of that here too. I feel like you know your flesh just doesn't hold together as well when you're uh, barely alive. <laughs> um. That's her, her handle right there. Hey, how's it going? Derailed by your own genius. Yeah, no, happens all the time. Toasty, what's cracking, my man? Uh, so we're um, we're drawing some some essentially critical role fan art, but uh, it was just it was a scene that I, I enjoyed too much to not want to draw it. Um, just the concept of it was a flippin' riot. So. Uh, and, and immediately I was thinking like, um, uh, wacky races, like the, the, the old, like, so, so that's why I wanted to do it in profile, m more in profile. Cause there were some other like angles that I thought would be great. You know, like if you wanted to do one where it's like, so we'll just do this on a different, uh, and this is where you would make a contact sheet if you were doing it professionally, but like, you know, a, um, an angle kind of in sort of in almost three quarters uh of them kind of like racing towards the camera and then 
like this. This is another another angle that I've been contemplating, but I, I it just immediately what came to mind was like wacky races. So I wanted to do. Um, but then I thought like maybe a, a three frame where you're like, you know, a little easy profile up here, then one from above right here, and then uh, and then like that three quarter one um, as the main image. But regardless, we're going to do it this way because I, uh, I really like the idea of it, you know, rocketing through the wasteland. Um, Saggy boobies. Uh, oh, I was just saying that. Uh, so this character, she, um, she's uh, uh, basically undead, um, and uh, you know, undeads, uh, undead characters. I feel like they would tend to have uh, have have some some saggier boobas uh, due to you know the fact that their flesh isn't so fresh. It's some not, not, not fresh flesh, you know? That's all I'm saying. hysterical concept she's got her her form of dread but yes that is why we are talking about the the sage bubaz um her jaw is unhinged which means that it's basically yeah, down there like that Crying black tears. Cracks running around her. But yeah, so this is going to be a very quirky kind of... level of pixelation like you would want it like right here is like the closest to that you really should even need to be um so i want her jaw it came down like this it's unhinged so it's kind of across like that there we go and there's her chin It's all like gross corpsey corpsiness. You know? She doesn't have muscles, just sinew holding her body together. Um I feel like she'd have a ton of bracelets too. I don't know if they ever described that, but um But like very like I'm just thinking like undead Professor Trelawney from Harry Potter. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what I'm thinking. Plus this creates an interesting shape right here. Nice little. Actually, I think it would catch right here. 
and blow out this way the, the sleeve would. So it would bunch up on the interior of the elbow and then blow out from the side. And then actually like blow up like this so I, I'm, I'm just picturing lots of like necklaces and and bracelets and stuff you know very drapey clothes just because of the whole uh, undead saggy body thing and you'd see like her skeleton and rib cage through it the wind blowing it against her body. right at the start of the race too so I have no idea how the race ends because like I said I was literally just watching it right before I started streaming streaming today trying to get a little D&D &D fix in because I missed it yesterday it's a sad sad Thursday when you miss your Wednesday session But have to make other people happy sometimes. It's okay. <laughs> uh, it's a friend's birthday, so. And I could not find my phone before leaving the house, so I could not alert people that it ran later than I intended. Always give them the heads up if you can, you know? Alright, so then she's got her morning veil. I'm getting real fixated on this character right now. But that's cool. Uh, you know, juxtaposes the uh, the scene that we're currently creating. So when you unhinge your jaw, your ear is gonna like kind of like warp out of position because your your the bottom of your ear is actually like at your jaw. Uh, at your jawline, so that's <laughs> something we can't do that if we could, you kind of have to remember, you know? And that's just where, like, the anatomy knowledge, like, really is, is nice. You just want to have that in your back pocket, so that way you can throw it in there. So you can throw it in there when it's appropriate. undead young woman, but here, just horrifying, horrifying creature. Dun, 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 dun. 
and then... So I think with like, I think it's one of those, she, it, there, there's a certain like, uh, of that like, kinda Japanese aesthetic with some of her clothing, so I think it'd be one of these like, pinned in the middle of the hair veils. So it's like, this is, this is all hair. That's actually darkness right there. And then the hair would kind of like, She's got some nice long locks, you know. fingers fingies get those those fingies in there what the heck oh made a clipping mask everybody my bad. Got to release that. Whoopsies. All right. So then shoulder, shoulder bone. Cuz her bones are definitely going to like her joints are going to show through and stuff. She's so scrawny. folds and twists from her. Oh yeah. Alright. Anybody, anybody got any, uh, you know, fun news or anything uh, any any new discoveries anybody wants to talk about you know fire away it's another thing we like to talk about here up get all rolled around in there all right there we go get those gangly fingers gr going get those those gangly those gnarly fingers gnarly fingers dude It's so easy when you use when you use um, eraser 
the, the eraser to help sculpt. That's, it's just so, it's so intuitive for me. That's one of the reasons I like sketching that way, where you kind of carve with the eraser. You do a, a additive and subtractive rather than kind of like just doing additive. And that's, a lot of people will just kind of do additive. And I don't know, I feel like people view the eraser is like a weakness sometimes and it's not it's another mark making tool it's great it's a great mark making tool i mean like look at this just boop, little eraser mark right there just carve that shape out But we also don't want to create a um, creating a bit of a uh, um, uh, what is it called a bisect. Bi I can't remember the term right now because I'm focused on you know doing this. Um, a a um, basically uh, a, a, it's where two lines meet too close to each other. Um, and uh, it just creates a really weird, uh, really strange, like, optical issue. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of. So, like, like right in here, in this area, I, wanna, I would want to more clearly define things. So that way it doesn't look like her arm this right here is going directly into like the mark for the nail. But again, we're working in an area that is so like, see how pixelated it is? Like this is too zoomed in. I need to be like, this is as far in as I should be going. So, uh, and then that will be her veil. And that'll actually create a nice contrast since we're gonna paint this in a dark color. So we're gonna just clean this up. That's her veil. Cause her veil like extended out as part of the effect of her ability. the smoothing quite a bit uh, and then one of the other things we're gonna do is we're gonna put her hair into the veil too um, with a much lighter tone so I kind of want to we'll just go down to like this little contrast gap because her skin is going to be so pale um, and then at the same time it'll create a nice contrast with the darkness inside this sleeve right here it's these decisions to help increase the readability of the image uh -huh. I've done some kind of art for them before. One of the issues is I like I like to like be 
be as true to the scene as possible and include everything. And there's some stuff you just gotta, there's details you gotta let go of sometimes. Um, but I don't think I'll, I'll need to for this one. Because before I've tried to include like too many characters and stuff, and that's that's where you start getting into like danger zones. Because you're like, eh, you don't need all those. You don't, you, you, like, you start drowning in details. Scope creep. We gotta reduce the scope of, of what the image you're trying to portray. Is that, is that scope creep? expanding to a point where you can't keep up with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um. ham right there going a little in depth into one section so we gotta broaden our horizons back out we gotta expand our scope get back into the, the broad strokes section of this so this would be the seat normally we're gonna say be right back all right we'll see you in a minute oh Go ahead and grab some water while you're up, Toasty. Here's that uh, hydration break brought to you by two oxygen atoms bound to a hydrogen. <sighs> mm, there it is. Fuel in our bodies. Make sure you stay hydrated, people. Hydrate yourself. Exactly. Human body is at least 80% water. <laughs> Go ahead and refill it on occasion. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we've had this discussion already. Your, your, your coffee fixation will uh, eventually leave you a desiccated, you know, well, her. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna look like that. You keep drinking coffee. Just tired eyes, very gaunt flesh. <laughs> tears, black tears streaming down her face. I died and stuff. <laughs> Laudna, no. yes, they'd be fascinated with each other. Laudna would uh, show off pate, and then uh, Dunkledorf would show off his pets. <laughs> Much more impressive than Pate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, 
Look at that. Ooh, ooh, we love it. See, I still get in, I get in too deep. I like, I, I, I enjoy the fine details, even if they're details that nobody will ever see. I, it's, it's a weakness. It is not a strength in art, knowing when you should, you know, exclude because it's unnecessary. When you, when you don't need to include information is, uh, it's a skill in art and <laughs> not, not one of my strong suits. Cause I, I, I just enjoy it too much. I enjoy all the little details. <laughs> pate uh for those not in the know pate would be this character's uh dead rat who is a a puppet and pet for her uh because she's a little crazy um almost like you know being murdered had negative effects on her or sort of murdered i don't know can't wait to learn more about her backstory Actually, I think her white hair is right up in here. Not as much on the sides, fairly certain. So. Uh, I've heard that it's best to do waves of detail so the whole piece has the same level of detail. I've also heard you should work on what interests you. I also am not an artist. Um, yeah, waves of detail is definitely like that. And that's why you, um, and that's why you kind of do things in stages. Uh, actually, interestingly, when you look at AI art, um, you'll, if you watch the rendering, it starts with blobs of color. Um, and, uh, that's the, the, the it's essentially the Alta Primo uh, painting method so it's like blobs of color and tone that slowly uh, render themselves more and more um, detailed which is you know and that's essentially what so I really should stop working on her and start working on other people um, but we're going to be maintaining a pretty similar level of detail I think on the whole piece um, just because of the way that I tend to work anyways. Um, so, uh, we'd kind of get she, a little bit of her rib cage would, would catch some of the, the cloth as it billowed out behind her some. Uh, welcome back, sir. Did you get your water? Get your hydration in? It's important. here today I imagine Finland is feeling it um, all right so we'll shake this one down zip at the turn just a little bit the turn in the pipes there we go just like that see it yeah there we go and then this one so You'll notice that pipes have like a light rippling in them just from the bending process. Uh, unless it's like fully chromed out, but even still, uh, on some, you'll see that. So, yeah, just include that to inform the viewer of where 
like the shape of these. Um, there you go. Boom. I'm excited to get into the leg area. So the legs are going to be right down here. And let's see, we need to broad stroke it out. So we're going to go, go big. So because these things are moving so fast, when you're running, you actually like completely leave the ground quite a bit. Um, and these happen to be, so the bend in the leg would actually be, is like, because if we look at it, and then if we break it down into, you know, very cartoony elements. So that's essentially like, you know, here's the ankle. So this is the ankle one, you know, and then that would be the foot and the toes. Or if it were a horse, you know, hoof. <laughs> uh, man, grapes are good and I've started to eat grapes. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> uh, actually, um, the lady just made uh, champagne grapes for a uh, bridal shower. She had to uh, had to plan. Um, oh, you found some cool news? Hit us with it, my man. Hit us with the news, bruv. Um, so this would be like essentially a stopping mechanism. Cloned mice created some freeze-dried skin cells. <laughs> created from free freeze-dried skin. Woo! Oh dang! About to make a lot of racist clones from the 1960s and 70s. <laughs> All those people who froze themselves when cryotechnology first really hit the mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> Cold War cryogenics. Uh, it's helpful if you make the sound effects. Always. It's always helpful to make the sound effects. Never think that it's not. Anybody who tells you differently is a liar. So this would be... We're going to make this into some kind of like hydraulic thing and it's going to be fully extended because obvs obvs yo and then another kind of like and this thing's got like claws to dig into this hard packed ground Clones don't retain memories as far as they know. They'll, they'll have a chance to learn like anyone. So, Walt Disney coming back. <laughs> That'll be an interesting thing. Will he still not like the Jewish people? Yes, that's right, everybody. Everybody who's a Walt Disney fan, just remember, he was an anti-Semite. <laughs> if you, you know... If you care about, like, if you want to cancel Dr. Seuss over some stuff. Walt Disney, I'm just saying. <laughs> They'll be clean slates. 
We can hope. Although that would be an interesting experiment in nature versus nurture, eh? Are you a product of your t of, of the times, you know? I was listening to a Bill Burr special recently, and that was one of the things he talked about is, <laughs> you know, Sean Connery saying that, uh, you know, it's a... It's a in the, in the 1970s saying like, oh, I don't know, sometimes you gotta smack a woman. Uh, you know, not a great thing to say, but was it a crazy thing to say for the time? Not as much, because the, the, the history informed his ideology. You know what I'm saying? So that would be an interesting thing on nature versus nurture. If you could clone people who were known uh, bigots. <laughs> and then see if they uh, end up the same way, shall we? It would definitely eliminate a lot of the argument of product of their time type thing. <laughs> 3D printed ear implant made of her own cells. That is wicked cool. 3D printing biological material so that way there's no donor rejection. That that would be that would be pretty or I mean no no recipient rejection. I don't know. Yeah, I guess donor rejection because you reject the donor tissue. I don't know. However, the medical community describes it when Somebody rejects, somebody's body rejects the, whatever they were given. <laughs> Pulling my focus in a lot of directions, you know? This one, it's a nice challenge for me, because it's like, it tests my, uh, my, my ADD pretty bad. <laughs> How many things can he focus on at once? Okay, moving on. Back to the legs. Back to it. So. And this is where like neat you know anatomy can come back into play too because I'm I'm drawing robot legs so it's like okay like let's put the muscles and ligaments on the outside since it's a robot and uh, and and knowing how it's put together because it's like okay well we have a massive rotation point at the knee so you definitely are gonna have to have some kind of like joint or joist that is attaching to something that would act as a ligament in this case some kind of hydraulic mechanism. Um, some kind of mechanized hydraulic thingamajoo. Thing, thingamajoo. That, it, that, that's not... Sorry. <laughs> it's not, not how it sounded. Thingamajingy. Thing, thingamajig? Thingamajig. I had... Walt Disney on the brain. I'm curious. Oh, they got some strange, you know. More strange. 
ball and socket kind of allow additional articulation. creating that cool like spikiness that we're wanting to showcase because it's Mad Maxi, you know, it's some, some Mad Maxi type stuff. extent that it would so we would have it kind of do this actually and then roll out that way there we go so it's it's almost still a wheel well you know basically create like a, a, a maybe an armored mud flap situation that's kind of like bouncing I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know how I feel about that yet. Put it on a on a hinge joint. Right there and right there. Little battle scars. We'll see how I feel about it. See how I feel about it in a bit. Definitely like in this as like a stop for the back end. And actually, that creates a cool dynamic that would also be a functional dynamic where it's like creating almost a. like a, a, a double redundancy. So it's like, okay, it can extend a little bit further back, but then like once it gets to a certain point, like it will, this will, this will hit this and then compress and then push it back into position to like kind of assist the legs in like their mechanization or their physical mechanics. It's a little rounded too, so that way it can catch, kind of like the way your heel does when you step. You know, if that's your your toe, when you step forward, you roll back from your heel to your toe, heel toe, heel toe. So it would actually like even assist with that. So I like that decision. I like that decision right there. It's a good one. Good one got made. Good, good, good one made. Good one made. I think some like a padded thing that would also be spiked for traction. With more hydraulic piston situation right there. full hour and a half 
and then we'll have another thing to hop into. And one of the reasons is because I, I, I wanted to get this done so that way, you know, if I get sidetracked at all, like, I know that this is a project that I really wanted to do just because uh, it's fun and I, uh, I, I really enjoy the content that they're producing. So it's a, you know, a little homage, a little, hey, thank you. Thank you for making what you make. Uh, well, at the same time, being a fun, you know, exercise piece for me. <laughs> and I won't lie, you know, if people are like, hey, did you see this video of this dude drawing your scene? And they're like, dang, that's nice. He's got skills. <laughs> I wouldn't get mad at that. Not that I'm counting on that to happen at all. <laughs> Oof. Gotta get a new headset. This one's starting to scrape my dome a bit. Padding. Padding's just running out on all of my computer, you know. Sitting area. lot of sense actually mechanically speaking because it would roll roll the foot make contact with that which if we actually do a nice little hook design right there at the back hits that compresses rolls to this and then to this, which then pushes off. It's a well-informed machine here. It's good stuff. Welcome to drawing decision-making. Or concept decision You know, but concept artists, honestly, they actually don't do what I... Like, the way that a professional concept artist conceptualizes things compared to the way I do it, vastly different. You know, there's, um, they much more shotgun out uh, a lot of like broad images and then narrow down based on, you know, what the client or art director wants. Uh, and, you know, but since I'm not, I'm just working for myself, not for any kind of company. I'm just going with, uh, you know, what comes straight to my, my dome. Coming off the dome. So, so I get to grow and evolve the, the piece as I go rather than have like a, you know, they get to make some decisions as time, like during the development process, but not as many like spur of the moment ones, I don't feel like. Then again, never been a professional concept artist, so. Even though that was my dream for a very long time. Um, one of the issues I learned, though, was how, um, kind of, uh, how well treated they are because so many people want to be concept artists especially character designers character concept artists that when there's that high of a supply then they can just treat you like trash it's not okay Where? 
great. Just helping us, soothing us while we grind, grind here today. Hope everybody's got a good weekend plan. Looking forward to stuff, you know. Let's complete this leg. Let's complete this leg before we end the stream today. But here we go. We'll also make a nice little. Uh, -do 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 -do. Where's my gradient tool? All right, yeah, now we'll do a gradient. It'll be fun. Um, neutrals. What? No. Grays. Grays. There we go. We'll just do this one. Hey. Said 100%. And this is I actually create like a, a little ambient occlusion right away and kind of just help us inform the scene a little bit. And actually, we'll just push it a little bit more. We'll just go up to right there. There we go. And that. So see, it's, it's a, a graded paper, so now we can really... It'll just help inform, you know, because it's going to be a cloudless day, so it's going to be a lot of ambient lighting and stuff. Um, I might even want to draw this like in a very graphic, like comic booky style. That would be that would be a lot of fun too, though. You know? um, why are we? Yeah, hey, Orgman, what are you doing, bud? You gotta get you gotta get back. You gotta stop working on her. She's she's at a, a good spot right now. You can come back to this. You can come come back to it. Come hey, stop it. What are you doing? Come on back. Come on back. I have to be my own Navi. Hey! Listen! I really liked it. <laughs> I, I just love this figure in this pose. Um, there we go. We'll just, just gonna tighten that up. Because I really wanted to showcase that her elbow is out, you know? other side of the handle but again we're creating that ah tangent we're creating the tangent which I, I don't want so see if I had done it like this it would just not look as good as if I did it like this that little bit of separation right there makes the shape more readable the lines more readable and just improves all of it a whole lot you know actually here's something that I think we're gonna be changing she is a little too so we just do need to make one little fix she's a little too Later. 
but back to the legs come on you gotta finish up you got 10 minutes you gotta at least get these these suckers down here um all right so well, all right so really just maybe some kind of armor bolted on to try and protect it a little bit. Curving around. And got one right here. Curving around the other side. Which is cool because then you'll get a nice little view of both. like you know they're 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 taking parts from old ones uh that have been destroyed and then reattaching them so it's a lot of recycled material so there's going to be a lot of just like scrap metal bolted and welded onto locations um say that that yeah and actually this will scoop around like that because it's gonna need to fit over that ball ball joint on occasion that will slip out and over and then down here like that there we go like that boom and then it can fit right over that ball joint right there which would be great Think about that mechanization. How is it working? How is it staying together? How is it holding up? All right. A little bit of time. A little bit of time left in the stream, so we're gonna try and just polish this up. Just a little bit more to inform our decision making for next time. Working our way through. this let's see 
how are we going to resolve these shapes? Um, so this is a piece of armor. Uh, I guess it's going to roll up and over. There we go. That's actually how it's going to go. down here like this so it's affixed it's actually gonna meet right there and then this and then that goes into this joint her veil going and then coming pouring out of here is just gonna be like smoke and sparks and stuff so we'll include that with the final render because yeah we're gonna totally we're totally gonna render this thing all the way out heck yeah beautiful beautiful the exact same thing on the other side so then we'll see this leg in an extended position and you'll see this kind of like heel spike in action as, it, as it's about to the ground plane is right here, you know? Well, actually, I guess the ground plane is going to be more... Right there. There we go. Dust kicking up off of his wheel. It's going to be great. Um... So actually, that's going to push back. Let's go ahead and just put this in the correct position right away. It's going to be on a, on a, a rounded track right here, too. So that's going to be... zone podcast where they have a really cool like desert race too but uh i feel like um in the adventure zone they're 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 not as uh, he's a lot nicer of a dm to his brothers than matt mercer is to uh his his cast <laughs> he's willing to kill he's willing to kill a lot more um. There we go. As we kind of just slowly render this out more and more. <laughs> and, uh, that would be more like that. If, uh, I've had some bad decision making based on the angle that I had the canvas at. 
All right, but for now, um, so the leg is gonna be right here. So right here, right here. So this is about where the spike is gonna be. situation that we had been talking about earlier. For like shock absorption, almost. Actually, I feel like his nose would, because he's got a, a very hooked nose. He's like, basically, if a gnome became a goblin, <laughs> or if, a, if a, a goblin became a gnome, that's, that's kind of his aesthetic, I feel like. Just an old man. are going to have to end the stream here, even though I don't want to because I'm having such a good time drawing this. Um, but uh, we are going to have to end it because we do have some, uh, some actual work to get done too, so, you know. Um, Got to be going and getting, getting, making money so we can keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, it's funny, your tongue actually like depresses when you're like, ah, ah, like pushes into the, the base of your, your mouth. All right. Well, I think, you know, one day we're going to have to, um, gonna have to uh, do like a whole day of just stream like drawing stream I think because it'll be fun for me too you know uh, hey man have an awesome day uh, hope you got a little work done you know alongside us hope you um, have a an awesome rest of your day and a, a great Friday too tomorrow you know uh, we will be back tomorrow um, at 1.30 for another episode, uh, but that is going to be it for now, right? Yeah, yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be, we've got to, we've got to be done. But anyways, yes, so um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, keep grinding, you know, keep, uh, keep putting your, your positive energy out there in the world. Keep putting, uh, you know, 
new, you keep making your content, keep improving the world around you, and uh, be part of the, you know, part of the part of the change you want to see in the world. So, um, unless that's like a really, you know, un unless that is a racist clone thing that, that if if unless the world is that you want to see is you know. Uh, idealized for for frozen people brought back to life who are bigots then then don't then don't 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 make the world the way you want it but if you want to see you know more love and camaraderie and a sense of shared purpose uh and wonder then please keep uh keep working on making the world the way you you want to see it um all right. Well, uh, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 1.30. Um, go ahead and do whatever you got to do for whatever you're viewing this on, whether it's like and subscribe or just subscribe or, you know, um, just uh, leave a comment. Um, exposure helps. And uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitch, VOD, Patreon our own website, porgandesigns.com, YouTube. Uh, so just check us out and um, keep grinding and uh, keep, you know, checking in and chilling with us while uh, we get our grind on. Thank you so much for joining us and um, uh, enjoy some, you know, Adventure Zone or some Critical Role content or uh, look at uh, look into um, uh, 3D printed uh replacement parts for humans you know great things that uh, are on the horizon and share that with people instead of the other thank you so much love y'all keep spreading that love have a good one